Scala is what is known as an object-oriented programming language, and it's very object-oriented in that every value inside of the Scala language is what's called an object. Now what that means is simply that it has the ability to contain other values and have methods. So objects have these things called members, and members can be member data or functionality called methods. How does that impact us in our programming? Well, it becomes significant when we want to call these methods. So how do we call the method on an object? Well, simply with a dot notation. So I have the value 5.6. Normally, as we saw previously, that would be a double. But if I wanted to convert it to an integer, I could call the toInt method. And do that by saying dot toInt. And when I hit enter, I get a 5. That might be surprising to you. After all, normally if you think of converting 5.6 to an integer, you would round it, and it would round up to 6. However, conversion to integers in Scala and most other programming languages winds up simply doing a truncation. So it throws away the fractional part. We leave it as an exercise to the listener to figure out how you can convert the ability to do truncation to actual rounding. What would you have to do mathematically to turn it into a rounding operation? So you might be wondering, well, what can you call on things? Well, just like in the command line, you had the ability to use tab to complete expressions for you. Turns out that the Scala uh, REPL also has tab completion. Uh, there's also something called an API, which we'll introduce later on. Uh, but this gives us a list of some of the things that we can do. So, for example, integers can be converted to doubles. And that just, as far as the printout goes, it adds a point zero, but it changes the representation inside of the computer for how it's storing it. You'll also note that some of these things here are the mathematical operations that we were using before. Plus, minus, multiply, divide. But we didn't use a dot with that. And that's actually due to something that Scala allows in a general sense. Turns out that when we do 4 plus 5, we're actually doing a method call like that. So we're taking the 4 object and we're calling the method plus on it and we're passing that plus the value 5. We just don't have to put the dot in the parentheses. Any time that you have a method in Scala and that method takes a single argument, like plus does, you only pass one thing to it on the right hand side, you can throw away the dot and the parentheses and simplify the expression. But it is calling a method and that's part of what makes the, the syntax for Scala uh, more uniform. What about some of the things for a double? Well, another way that we could get this menu, you you saw before I when I typed in 5.6, we talked about the fact that it said double and it gave me the 5.6. It also printed out here a res zero. And the next thing I typed in it was res one, res two, res three, res four. Those are actually names for the values that we calculate. And that can be useful so that you can reuse things. It's almost like memory on a computer. But I can use that and hit dot to get expansions for things. You can see that the double here doesn't have quite as many of the options that the integer did. Um, but it does have the main mathematical operations that we would expect, as well as things that convert it to other types. We'll come back and talk about some more of those types in the next video.